All right. So now let's talk about agile project management. So the agile approach evolved in the 90s and early 2000s um, out of the uh, sort of tech boom in Silicon Valley uh, as a, an approach that was highly optimal for software development projects uh, in that community. And it's, it's all about um, rapid iteration and figuring out uh, requirements and building prototypes uh, that a customer can, can see quickly and iterating through that full cycle again and again and again until the final product is delivered. And so it's, it's very customer focused, um, speed uh, focused, um, it's very informal and flexible. And uh, you know, for these reasons, it's viewed as uh, highly efficient and effective for IT, uh, software development, um, and also any kind of project where um, requirements are still being shaped or are changing or where there's you know, a chaotic environment like, like an emergency management scenario. So this has become, you know, really the best practice for any kind of uh, IT uh, project and is very popular uh, and, and used uh, worldwide. Um, and there are uh, professional associations that uh, uh, provide certifications in uh, the Agile approach and specifically with uh, what's known as the Scrum uh, technique, uh, and uh, Maddie and I both have our our Scrum uh, uh, certification, Scrum Master certification. So, which we'll be talking about what that role uh, in in an Agile project is. Um, yeah, any any other points, just generally on Agile? Um, no, I mean, what stood out to me on this slide is the informal and flexible. I think one thing that we've really taken to heart through our experience in emergency management, implementing some of these approaches is um, just keeping it really uh, open to feedback and open to um, modifications as you go along. So not, not sticking to any particular process as the gold standard, but knowing that um, making improvements, incorporating customer and team feedback into your work process as you go is only going to make things faster. So. Yeah, so you know, you know, agile emphasizes you know people and getting them interacting rather than worrying about reporting and and all the formality related to those knowledge areas we talked about with traditional uh, project management. Each of which, you know, has a, a lot of protocol and and sort of deliverables of their own, like like contracts and um, you know hiring and communications and so forth. So so. You know, this is all about getting people working together. So this picture on the right sort of ex exemplifies that where we have a team, you know, collaborating around a common uh, project and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, literally face-to-face uh, -face for, for long periods of time trying to, to work through every uh, aspect of the project together. Um, so other things that, that Agile uh, tries to emphasize is working software or a working product, uh, whatever that may be, uh, rather than worrying about all the documentation uh, that, that may be uh, emphasized in traditional uh, projects. The other thing is, is uh, collaborating with the customer. Uh, so this is really key. And, and you'll see how uh, we've done that in our project, but, but basically this revolves around having regular uh, demonstrations of uh, progress with the customer, something that in traditional project management is often uh, saved for just a few checkpoints or even in some cases the, the, the final uh, delivery itself. So Agile instead uh, gets the customer involved in making the product itself with, with the project team to a degree. And, and that's, uh, that's really uh, part of the, what makes it so great. Yeah, and I think it's important to keep in mind that I, you know, initially or you know, in the beginning, agile is intended for software development. So a lot of the terminology and um, you know, purpose of why things are the way they are is for getting, you know, pushing out software products. But um, 
you know, the, the mindset and at the heart of what it is works really well in the environment of emergency management when you're not necessarily developing software, but you're just trying to tackle a lot of different cross-functional tasks. And so taking some best practices from these approaches um, works when you're not necessarily developing software, but just something to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And, and um, you know, responding to change. So Agile is mm -hmm. all about being prepared to handle a change in a customer requirement. And, um, and you'll see how that's done here. So this slide shows what's known as the Scrum framework, which is basically a sort of agreed upon process for uh, bringing in requirements from a customer, uh, figuring out and prioritizing which ones you're gonna work on, and then uh, working uh, for uh, a week or two, uh, generally, um, but but it could be longer, even even a month or something, on just those identified items, and then delivering uh, the uh, what's been completed after that sprint, um, and and so this is something you would repeat, you know, again and again and again over the course of let's say a year. But, but this process is what's known as Scrum, and basically. It, so the, the big loop in the center is is the sprint, uh, what's known as the sprint. Uh, it's the it's the period uh, that that you're working in, um, and then the the little offshoot from that is known as the daily scrum. Is is the is uh, all the the team members coming together uh, to quickly go over uh, what's needed, you know, for that particular day. So um, it gets your team, you know. To be able to say, hey, if there's any blockers or impediments to uh, continuing work, that can get found out right away, and 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 um, and then they can get back to work. Or if they need to collaborate with the team member, you know, that daily uh, check-in, something that can pair them up, uh, identify that the pairing is needed right away. So, you know, these are uh, techniques in in this Scrum framework that that allow for uh, the flow of work to happen um, and not, you know, waiting uh, for a long period before things are, are found out or, or moved along to the next stage. Yeah, mm -hmm. Maddie, maybe point out some other things that you see here. Yeah, so in an emergency management context, your product backlog could be, you know, if you're a field team um, and you need to go assess damages in a very massive area, you know, you could break that down into um, you know, neighborhoods or um, districts or something like that. And then you have your, um, your sprint, which is the total amount of time it's going to take all of your field people to collect all of that data. And then, you know, you have your daily huddles um, where you're each meeting in the morning and maybe planning out where you're going to go for the day. Um, and so a lot of this stuff, while the terminology um, you know, is specific to products and um, planning meetings it can it can also be very easily translated into emergency management lingo as well yeah yeah and i guess we can point out a few other terms here uh starting with the, the product owner this is really where the requirements you know are initiated um this could come from the customer you know externally or or an internal product owner as well within the organization but it's the it's essentially the person or groups of people who are are making the requirements, setting the requirements, and then uh, from there they uh, are reviewed by the team and then worked on by the team. The Scrum Master is the role uh, in this overall uh, process that uh, ensures that uh, requirements are are collected and work is progressing and um, work is completing and delivered to the customer on time. So they're sort of overseeing this, this whole flow. And then at, at the end there, you see uh, what's known as a, a sprint review and a sprint retrospective. And these are, you know, after the conclusion of a single sprint, you know, looking at, at the work that was completed and then also a retrospective, which allows the team to uh, refine and improve 
how the process went uh, that they just experienced uh, so that they can be uh, even better in the next sprint. So the whole idea is to get better and better and better as a team, the more sprints you do together. And so this slide here um, basically shows uh, Agile in, in the green, but there are some other sort of closely related methodologies um, that you may see uh, related to you know, design uh, thinking and uh, lean startups and continuous adaption, which I think um, embody a lot of this uh, continuous approach um, uh, that, that Agile, you know, is part of a larger sort of expanding um, project management uh, and, and product sort of development uh, uh, philosophy and, and uh, wanted to point that out. So, so you may see um, specific uh, discussions of, of, of this stuff that, that is useful. Um, Agile is, is probably the origin for a lot of this thought, but um, it's an expanding uh, field uh, depending on kind of what, uh, what you're, you're looking at. So um, just to kind of go over uh, some of the terminology, we have uh, scrum ceremonies and scrum artifacts. So ceremonies are those events that take place uh, as part of the, the scrum uh, process. So these are, um, you know, the planning, sprint planning session, uh, figure out what you're gonna work on during the sprint. Uh, the daily scrum, which we mentioned is the, the team coming together to make sure they have their ducks in a row to figure out what they're gonna work on. Um, a sprint review after uh, the, the, the sprint is complete. You know, how did it go? Uh, is there uh, uh, presenting it to the customer, um, you know, the product? And then the sprint retrospective, which is, you know, are, are there any, um, you know, a meeting uh, where the team looks at how they could uh, improve based on uh, the, the sprint experience? So are there any areas they could improve on? Uh, yeah, any uh, comments on, on these ceremonies, Maddie? Um, one thing we incorporated, and we'll talk about this in our case study, but the sprint review is more of a demo where we're, um, each person on the team is presenting screen sharing or you know talking to work that they completed during the sprint um, so that the, the product owner or the customer um, is you know visually seeing that work that was completed so that's been a great way to incorporate to get more feedback and incorporate that into the next sprint cycle yeah yeah that's a good point so uh some more terms over here related to artifacts so these are you know specific uh things you'll use throughout a a sprint um the the first one is what's known as the product backlog so this is really uh, the list of, of requirements um, from the, the product owner. So all the things that they want developed or built or produced, um, that's, that's the, the backlog as it's known, the product backlog. Um, so that could be uh, in any uh, order or priority at, at that stage. It's just the full, full list. Whereas the sprint backlog, are the highest priority items from the product backlog that have been selected to be worked on in the in the sprint that that you're planning, and then the burn down chart is a, a cost management uh, artifact that is essentially a graph showing you know how the team is doing related to uh, progress of completing the work related to uh, uh, the cost. Um, are they are they over or under um, uh, cost? And so, yeah, any, any items here you wanna mention? Yeah, the, I mean, the Scrum artifacts are sort of like the agile version of uh, what's well, documentation, uh, you know, it's a it's written context as to what's being completed and, and you'll speak to the burn down chart in a moment, but that's how you track how on progress you are with your um, product development. So. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some more uh, fun terms in, in Agile that you may come across. 
our, our themes, which are sort of the, the highest level uh, describing, you know, the abstract goal of, of uh, a work endeavor. A, a product owner, as we mentioned, is, is who uh, defines the requirements. And an epic uh, is uh, groups of related uh, user stories, which uh, you may find this in, in a project. So there may be certain types of uh, components or uh, parts of the project that make sense to group together. Uh, those are known as epics. Um, a story uh, or a user story, as it's often uh, referred to, are, are sort of specific items that can be worked on, very understandable, that uh, can be assigned to a team member and can be built. And uh, that's often the, the unit I guess that that one talks uh, about in in working through the agile process. So um, user stories, and then uh, Scrum tasks are 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 sort of uh, any uh, sub item of a story. So to to build a story that could be let's say you know a dashboard or a map or um, or even a widget uh, within a a, a dashboard. So depending on the complexity, uh, these things could be, you know, a story or an individual task that's sort of up to the team to, to how to define that. But a task would be the smallest uh, item that could be assigned to somebody and a story would be a collection of, of those and, and so forth. So these are just sort of the hierarchy of, of sort of how um, Agile talks about um, the breakdown of work, if you will. Mm -hmm. And and traditionally, I mean, here it mentions that the product owner breaks down a theme into one or more epics. And I think one thing that we've seen in emergency management, that usually the team is actually sort of breaking down tasks and figuring out how to take the, you know, what the, you know, customer wants and how to split it into tangible tasks. So, um, you know, just one thing that's flexible, I think, or you know, yep. customizable. Yeah, agreed. These are um, um, not all used in in every project either. I think some some of what we're showing here is 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 just from the 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 theory and and text itself from the Agile Manifesto um, <clears throat> that was was published originally, and, and so any organization can choose to sort of adopt uh, different levels of complexity with this stuff. Um, so here's the burn down chart that we referred to. It looks sort of like the earned value management system in traditional project management just sloped the other way. Uh, this is all about sort of burning down to your last dollars uh, and, and delivering products, uh, your final product that way. But um, again, cost management and performance management is, is done in, in Agile too. So. Yeah, and one thing this graph mentions in order to have a burn down chart, you have to give your tasks or stories um, points. And those points are um, associated with how much time you think it'll take you to complete that task. So there is also sort of a time management aspect to um, Agile as well. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that, can, be, that can be hard to define. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. points um, that may be arbitrary, coming up with a good unit for what points means, if you're really following to a T uh, is a skill. Um, but but yes, the, the requirement to break down work and, and mm -hmm. assign to, to a, a staff is still a, a really high priority item um, to do with, with this uh, methodology as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you can usually, I think what we do is one point is a day's worth of work. And so tasks can be assigned a half point or a quarter point if it's, you know, an hour or a half day worth of work, um, or it gets eight points if it's going to take you a whole week to complete. Um, but then there's, I think what, like what Rob was mentioning is it's arbitrary. The team chooses how they want their point system to work. Um, and then you build your burn down, burn down chart based on that. So, yeah. 